Cash Flow Statement Part 2 Reconciling Cash Evolution with Figures in the Balance Sheet and the Income Statement Let's consider one cycle with the initial balance sheet, the income statement of the year, and the ending balance sheet. Furthermore, let's assume that during this cycle there was no divestment. A divestment is the sale of fixed assets. And uh, it's the contrary of an investment. So we assume no divestment. We assume, secondly, that the supplier's account concerns only purchases of goods. Uh, it's a simplification uh, to explain cash flow statements. You will see that it, this doesn't matter. And thirdly, for the same reason, let's assume that investment, that is increases in the fixed assets, were paid cash. It's a minor assumption to make the explanation simpler. The objective of a cash flow statement is to explain the evolution of cash. The cash at the beginning of the year was 50. And in this lesson, once again, I assimilate cash and bank. So the cash was 50 and became 80. That is, there was an increase in cash of 30. And we want to explain this evolution from 50 to 80 with the help of the big measures that are sales, purchases, clients, charges, investments, etc. We shall calculate all the cash inflows and all the cash outflows in the cash and bank once again. Of course, cash inflows are nothing more than debits in the cash and bank account. And cash outflows, as we know, are credits in the cash and bank account. But we want to track this cash evolution from figures only here. That is already synthetic figures from the journal, the ledgers and stuff like that. The cash inflows, they can come from four sources. They can come from simply enough the sales of goods. That's the main source of cash, of course, for the bank, for the firm. Secondly, they can come from divestment, but we have assumed there are no divestment in our example. They can come from raising new capital, just like the initial capital, but more. And they can come from new borrowings. First of all, cash from sales. We cannot take directly all the sales figure, which are 1,000, because some sales are on credit. And, and secondly, there can be some cash coming from past sales and past our use of last year that were transformed into cash this year. So we have to be a bit more careful. Here's the way it's done. Think of all the sales that are on credit, some of them immediately transformed into cash, and view this picture of a bathtub. These are the sales coming in the firm during all the cycle, and this is the cash produced from the sales. The sales go into a bathtub called the client account, and this client account empties itself into cash. So we shall see that the, the real cash from sales is all the sales minus the increase in this water level of the client account. So we have cash from sales equals sales minus delta client, that is variation in the client account. And in our numbers, the figures are 1000 minus 270, that's the end client account, minus 200, that's the beginning client account. So cash from sales, 930. And there are no cash from divestment, that's an assumption. And if you go back to the figures, there is no cash from new capital and there is no new borrowing. So now we turn to cash outflows. They can come from purchases, but we, have, we shall have to be careful again. They can come from operating charges, so from purchases, from operating charges, from interest, taxes, and dividends, and from investments, like for example, the buildings went from 100 to 125, and the other uh, fixed assets also increased. So these are the four uh, 
thinks perhaps of uh, cash outflows. First of all, purchases. Well, the same reasoning as we did for sales applies. All the purchases fill out a bathtub called the supplier's account, and the, uh, the supplier's account gives itself out cash outflows. So the cash out from purchases is all the purchases minus the increase in the level of the supplier's account. And here that's 500 minus 20, because 500 that's the purchases, and the supplier's account, uh, the, its, its water level, if you like, went up from 80 to 100. So the cash actually outflow from purchases is only 480. Secondly, cash outflow from operating charges. The operating charges are these salaries and charges. 150, rent 50, and other cash charges 50, that's altogether 250. Remember that we are simply enough looking at credits in the cash and bank account. Then cash outflows from interest, taxes, and dividends, but these again go through um, some sort of a buffer, a bathtub, a stock, if you like, one way or another. So it's <coughs> the cash outflow, really, is 10 plus 20 plus 30, that's 60, minus the increase in the level of this buffer. I use the picture of a bathtub, I can also use the picture of a buffer. And this went up by 40. So the cash outflow, really, from these three items is 20. And finally, there is the cash outflow for investment, from investments, buildings increased from 100 to 125, that's 25, machinery increased from 100 to 150, this is the 50, transportation from 50 to 75, that's it. These are for the long term, or if you prefer, fixed to set investments, but we should not forget the short-term financial investments, which went from 70 to 120. So that's the 50 here. So all the investments are uh, 75, 100, 150. So we have now the total outflows. Purchases 500, corrected for the increase in the supplier's account, so minus 20. All the cash operating charges, 250. The cash outflow to pay interest, taxes, and dividends, corrected for their buffering, minus 40, and the two types of investments. So this is the list of cash outflows. And the nice thing is that we don't have to pay attention to all sorts of things which do not appear in the cash and bank account. We do not pay attention to stocks. Let's do it in blue. This doesn't appear in the cash and bank account, neither in credit nor in debit. Uh, this does not appear in the cash and bank account. And this doesn't appear in the cash and bank account. So uh, we are tracking cash. We are not tracking value in this uh, example. So we are finished. This is the total outflows. And the summary is here all the inflows of cash during the year we saw were 930 all the outflows we just saw them were 900 therefore the cash increased by 30 and that is indeed the 50 that went to 80